Welcome to the house of hypertrophy. What happens if instead of training with the same number of sets every week, you gradually increase your sets across weeks? Does it enhance muscle hypertrophy or is it just overdoing it and hurting your gains? A brand new study is the first ever to compare performing the same number of sets every week to progressing set numbers across weeks. It's caused quite a controversy online and you will see why shortly. Let us critically analyze this paper and then fit it into the overall scientific research to derive potential takeaways. 31 trained men were recruited. All subjects trained the back squat, leg press and leg extension twice per week for 12 weeks. They trained with 6 to 8 reps in the first session per week and 10 to 12 reps in the second session per week. All sets were performed to two reps away from failure, except the last set on each exercise which was performed to failure. Progressive overload by increasing load was done throughout the study to ensure subjects kept reaching these proximities to failure in the rep ranges. In the first week, all subjects performed 22 weekly sets for the quads split between the exercises. A fixed group continued to perform 22 weekly sets for the quads for the remainder of the study. A full set group added 4 sets for the quads every 2 weeks, resulting in them performing 42 weekly sets for the quads split across the exercises in the final week. A 6 set group added 6 sets for the quads every 2 weeks, resulting in them performing 52 weekly sets for the quads split across the exercises in the final week. All subjects rested at least 2 minutes between sets during the training sessions. Caloric and macronutrient intake was not significantly different between the three groups, and all of them consumed more than 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Hypertrophy was evaluated by measuring vastus lateralis cross-sectional area and thickness before and after the study, and the 4 and 6 set groups tended to see greater gains than the fixed set group. When comparing the 4 and 6 set groups, the averages tend to favor the 6 set group. However, the confidence interval was wider for the 6 set group and overlaps a fair bit with the 4 set group, particularly with the cross sectional area measurement. What on earth does this mean? Indirectly. This implies there was more variation in how well the subjects in the 6 set group grew compared to the other groups, so we can't say with complete certainty that the 6 set group was superior to the 4 set group. The researchers also evaluated back squat 1 rep max strength and increases were also superior in the 4 and 6 set groups versus the fixed group. In this case, when comparing the 4 and 6 set groups, the confidence intervals present a more convincing picture of the 6 set group seeing greater gains. In the future at the House of Hypertrophy, we'll have more videos surrounding strength gains as well as similarities and differences between training for strength and size. The results of this new study are highly fascinating. Gradually increasing sets to seriously high numbers led to greater gains, and these were the average sets used. As you can imagine, the use of these seriously high volumes is the center of its controversy. But before discussing this study more, it is important we know what the rest of the scientific research surrounding sets says. We actually detailed this in our last video, but for those who didn't watch it and as a refresher for those who did, let's speed through the key points. There have been three studies also finding that very high set numbers of up to 30 to 45 weekly sets per muscle group produced greater muscle hypertrophy. However, an important consideration is all three had subjects use short rest intervals between sets in training sessions. Why does this matter? Contrary to traditional belief, short rest might make each set less effective for building muscle, such that you have to perform more sets. This study demonstrates this, finding when performing three sets on the leg press per session, resting for three minutes between sets produced greater quad gains than resting for one minute between sets. But when performing five sets per session with one minute of rest between sets, quad gains were similar to the three sets with three minutes of rest. Therefore, it's possible if these three studies use longer rests, not as many sets may be needed to optimize gains. Indeed, in three studies that have used longer rests between sets in training sessions, all of them found hypertrophy was optimized in the 12 to 18 weekly sets per muscle group range, with no clear benefit to performing more than 18 weekly sets per muscle. These are the average results from the studies. We have research indicating individual differences can exist. Some people may grow more from lower or higher set numbers, and some may see similar gains between both. Now that we understand some of the key points from the scientific literature, let us more critically review this new study and detail what its potential takeaways could be. 
As noted, there's controversy surrounding the seriously high volumes used in this study. Some individuals are simply discarding this data entirely since they can't believe it and or it does not fit with their bias. All in all though, I feel it's crucial to view this data as analytically as possible. There's no question that the 4 and 6 set groups were performing super high volumes, even the fixed set group was performing more than most people typically do. But there are some things we must not forget. This protocol was just done for the quads, not other muscle groups. Groups. Most sets were not performed to failure. Recall they left two repetitions in the tank and only went to failure on the final set of each exercise. When defining failure, the researchers detail two options. One option is what I would consider true muscular failure, and the other option was more so voluntary failure and not true muscular failure. So some subjects may not have always been reaching true muscular failure on the final set either. Moreover, as some of you are probably thinking, it's even quite possible subjects were in act in estimating two reps in the tank. Though we have research showing trained individuals can be fairly accurate in predicting their proximity to failure, this isn't always the case and accuracy tends to be worse with lower body exercises. Having said this, subjects did train and progress in the 6-12 to 12 rep range and it's a whole lot easier to train closer to failure with this rep range compared to higher reps. Finally, recall subjects also rested at least 2 minutes between sets, which is a longer rest interval. This would make the training easier to handle and presumably allow them to push harder on each set compared to using shorter rests. None of this is to say what the 4 and 6 set groups did was remotely close to easy, it would have still been challenging for them. In fact, the authors noted some subjects reported excessive perceived fatigue in the final weeks, which is where the 4 and 6 set groups were going beyond 40 weekly sets for the quads. So I don't believe we can safely and literally recommend everyone to exceed 40 weekly sets. Besides, the duration of your training sessions like the present study, would be very long too. Nonetheless, I think there are some more general ways in which this study fits into the rest of the research. Strictly speaking, we don't actually know if the greater gains for the 4 and 6 set groups were because they performed more average sets or because it was the act of them progressively increasing the number of sets they performed bi-weekly. Of course, both could have contributed simultaneously, but if the average sets were contributing, this is the first evidence that when using longer rests, performing more than 20 weekly sets for a muscle could be beneficial for some trained individuals. This doesn't mean every single trained person should start performing more than 20 weekly sets per muscle group. Remember we still have three other studies failing to find a benefit to more than 20 weekly sets with longer rests. For now, I would just use this study as potential evidence that it may be justifiable for some well-trained individuals to experiment in the territory of performing more than 20 weekly sets for a muscle. Of course, it may be most feasible to do this with just a few muscle groups, perhaps ones that you feel to be lagging. If the act of progressively increasing the number of sets performed bi-weekly was contributing to the greater gains, then this is the first evidence this could be a beneficial strategy. If we use some more practical numbers, perhaps gradually progressing from 10 to 20 weekly sets per muscle group across a training block could be superior to just performing a fixed number of 15 weekly sets per muscle group. Intriguingly, this method was detailed in a paper by Mike Isrotel a few years back. After working up to 20 weekly sets, you could then deload and then do it all over again or bump up the number slightly in the next training block. But I believe more studies are needed to validate this method and provide deeper insights, but I think it can be fine for someone to experiment with this methodology if they desire. If you're searching for further guidance about training, our high quality partner the Alpha Progression app can help you create track and evolve your hypertrophy and strength training. A custom workout generator can tailor make an evidence-based program to your needs in less than two minutes. Let it know the equipment you have, how often and how long you want to train for, whether you want to focus or neglect certain muscles. You can even periodize set numbers, which is the method mentioned moments ago, where set numbers increase across a training block. With the touch of a few buttons, you can edit things more to your liking, such as changing set numbers if that's what you'd like to do. The app generates graphs that can track your progress, thereby saving you time. During workouts, it analyzes your past performance to provide progressive overload recommendations to help you continue making gains. There's also a massive exercise database with video and text tutorials on each movement. Try the app free for two weeks with a link in the comments and description. And if you like it and decide to go beyond, the link gives you 20% off a subscription. The reviews speak to the app's unmatched quality. 
As detailed in our previous video, the data indicates provided longer rest between sets are used, the 12 to 18 weekly set range optimized gains, with no clear benefit to performing more sets. However, this new study is a fascinating addition to the literature, finding that compared to performing a fixed number of 22 weekly sets for the quads, adding sets bi-weekly to very high weekly set quad numbers tended to produce greater muscle growth. These findings might indicate for some well-trained individuals, it could be justifiable to experiment in the territory of performing more than 20 weekly sets for a muscle, perhaps most feasibly with a few select muscle groups. This new study might also suggest that progressively increasing the number of sets across weeks could be a beneficial strategy, so it's something that you could experiment with if you like. It's still worth recognizing that individual differences likely exist. We have data suggesting some people may grow more from lower or higher volumes, or even similarly between both. So there truly is no one-size-fits-all approach. Consider all the research as potential training suggestions and starting points, and then you can adjust as you see fit. Thank you for watching. Feel free to check out the Alpha Progression app or our recent deep dive into building the lats.